Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Liz and this is Love of Fibers. And in this space, I like to share all about my knitting and all the knit garments that I am making. Today I'll be sharing all my finished objects, which are a few, and my first sewing project, my current whip, a, a brand new cast on, and some acquisitions. To get started, let's talk about what I'm wearing. I am wearing my Sabai top by Suzanne Mueller. And this top, as soon as it came out, I was so in love with it. I was like, I need to make this. And I right away, you know, had a vision. I wanted it in black. So I went ahead and ordered from Warehouse Drops Bell in black. And I ordered about five bowls of Drops Bell. And I used just like, you know, right under five. And again, I used the color black, which is this one right here. And this is all I have left of, you know, of of the five bowls that I bought. I also make gauge with the four millimeter needles, which is what the pattern calls for. And basically this top was so fast to knit up. It was such a fun construction and just like a quick knit. This yarn, which I've used before was, you know, very enjoyable to knit with. And this is a blend of linen, cotton, and viscose, which is kind of like a dupe for Santa's Garlina, which I love and I used last summer. This summer, I've made a couple of, you know, knitted garments in this summer yarn, and so far, so good. I've only worn these garments a few times, and they're holding up really nicely. I'll know more by next summer, and I'll share that update with you guys as well. My, my peacock tee, which I made in Santa's Garlina, that one has held up fantastic. I've been wearing that nonstop and that yarn is just so beautiful, just like the first day. So we'll see how this one holds up by next summer. I should know more. And I'm excited to have this one off the blocking mats and on my body. I really, really enjoyed making this top and I love how it fits. Now, let's talk about, you know, my measurements. So I'm a 36 inch bust and I made the size medium. So pre-blocking, and I'm gonna look down because I have notes. Pre-blocking, I got 35 inches, you know, my circumference. I got 20 and a half inches on length and eight inches on, on the arm. So now after blocking, I have 38 inches of circumference. So I got, you know, three from the pre-blocking to the blocking, I got three inches of positive ease. The pattern on that size that I made medium suggests that you should be at a 39 inch um, circumference, but I'm, I'm under one inch, which is fine. I am really comfortable. I have a lot of room. I am a 36 inch and like I said, I have, you know, I have space, I'm good. And the length, it's uh, 20 inches in length and that's the recommended for the pattern. So, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty close there on, on, you know, pattern sizing for the size that I selected and I'm very comfortable. I have a lot of room if it's really nice and I'll share, you know, I'll put videos for you guys just showing you the full top and, you know, the length that I made and everything. I made everything to pattern. I didn't modify anything. I usually do modify, you know, the length because I'm short. I have a short torso, so I don't like you know, my, my shirts to be very, very long. So this one was perfect at that 20 inch fit. Perfect. And like I said, the size medium was good for me. Everything fits perfect. And I'm very, very comfortable. I have not worn this out yet because I, like I said, I just finished it, you know, finished drying and I, you know, put it on. I was so excited and I came to record so you guys can see it. Once I wear it, I, you know, I'll give you some feedback on how comfortable it is truly to just wear all day and how the fabric holds up. The only thing that now that I'm wearing it, I'm not like such a fan of is, okay, I love the top and I love the finishing and everything. But the only thing that I'm not loving is like the boat neck. I feel this piece is too high for me. I would have liked for this to be a little bit lower, you know? And like the back is perfect, but the front I feel is too high for me. And, and this is the front because I made sure to keep like a stitch marker in the back part. So I would always know which was the back. And so I feel this is like for me personally, like a little bit too high here on my neck. 
um, you know, for this boat neck, but it doesn't bother me at anything. It's just, I feel like it's too high. I feel like this should have been a little bit kind of like, I don't know, like a little bit here, like lower. Um, so that's the only thing, but like I said, it's not uncomfortable or anything. I just prefer it to be a little bit lower and everything else is fits perfect. Now the design is beautiful. This is a boat neck. You finish the, the finishings here are I cord and basically the bottom and the top is just this like the bottom is just a regular bind off and the top is a regular cast on so i cast it on with a long tail cast on you know and because this is the finishing there's no finishing like once you're done you're done with this top i made sure that my long cast my long tail cast on was super neat and nice and small so that way you know because that's the visible part so that way it would be really pretty and on the, on the hem, I did the same thing. I like took my time and bind it off really nice. So everything could be like pretty and it would sit nice and flat when I blocked it. Um, you know, before blocking, it was a little curled, but then now it's completely flat and it's super nice and pretty. And I loved the construction of this because as you work on this, you're doing the finishing as well. So you, when you're done, you're completely done. And I love that. So it's a very quick knit and like a satisfying knit. And it's a really beautiful, elegant top. I feel that this top, that's why I wanted a black one. I can wear, you know, now in summer, but I can also wear in the fall, in the winter, I can layer it. I can put a blazer, I can put a button down shirt. You know, it's just really pretty, classic, um, very like elegant little top. And I love it. You can dress it up and dress it down. I would totally recommend this top. It's a quick knit, it's super cute. You know, the fit is very comfortable. And drop spell is fantastic, you know, for this or the Sennis Garlina, which is what she calls for, I believe. And so I would totally recommend this pattern. Again, Suzanne Mueller is fantastic designer. She really, you know, puts all the details that you need in her patterns, which I love and appreciate. So that's why I continue to like support her work and buy her patterns because I love that. I love that, you know, everything is detailed and it's always like you don't feel lost. So it's just a fantastic pattern. The other thing that I wanna mention about the pattern is that you get two tops in that pattern. So you get number one and number two. This is number two, which is like I said, the finishings are just like, you know, your cast on. And then in the number one, you actually have a one by one rib on top and I believe on the bottom. And so you get two patterns for, you know, the price of one, which is fantastic. And this is just an easy knit. Like I said, it's a top down and the techniques are simple. And, you know, I think this is a pretty beginner friendly top. It's a quick knit. If you want to go for it, you won't have like, you know, any issues. And I love the fact that you can wear a bra and you're like good, you know. So this is just like a really beautiful summer top, but also I feel like all year round kind of top. And so would I recommend it? Totally. And is it beginner friendly? Yes. And so is it a quick satisfying it? Yes, completely. So you can feel, you know, you can feel confident to go in and get this pattern and make one and you won't regret it because it's really, really beautiful. And like I said, once I get to really wear this and style it, I'll, you know, give you guys some more feedback on how I feel about the top. But so far, I love it. And like I said, I'm really comfortable. The only thing that I didn't care too much for is this. And I don't know if that's like, I don't know if it's this size for me or is it happening to everyone? I'm not sure. But I, you know, I would have preferred this to like be a little bit further down. But that's a me thing, you know? Nothing on the pattern. It's beautiful. I believe that hers maybe sits like that or I'm, maybe I'm wrong. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking, I should try this shirt the other way. I should try it with the back to the front to see if that one is lower because if it is lower, I'll just like reverse it and wear it that way. So I'll keep, I'll keep you guys posted on my findings when I try that as well. And as always, you know that on my Ravelry project, I put all the details. So I, by the time this goes live, all the details will be on that project page and you'll have all the information, you know, know the details of, of what I used and, you know, my, my measurements and my positive ease and all that good stuff. Like I said, I knitted this to pattern. I didn't modify anything at all. My next finished object, which I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. And if you watch my previous podcast of the one that I went to Portugal and Spain, you know what I'm talking about. It is my beautiful rib socks. So these are just 
gorgeous socks that I'm completely in love with because the yarn is everything, you guys. So this is the 2 by 2 rib sock in DK weight. This is from the Sock Project book by Summer Lee. And she goes by Summer Lee Knits. And she even has a podcast that's all about socks, if you're interested. And so basically, this is one of the patterns. And what I did, she does kind of like the same thing. She has a color on the top. And then she has the sock. But what I did was that I did color on top color at, on my toes and then also I changed the heel so I used my library collection from Sorella yarn this is a really special yarn that I love so much and this the, the speckled one is called memoir and then this this blue and this blue these are from the mini collection and these are fingering weight so I held them double to meet the DK and this was the nonfiction. So she had two mini collections. She had fiction and nonfiction. And I love the nonfiction for, you know, for this, for the memoir. So it was cool because either or little mini that you would get, it would have all the colors, all the speckles of the, of the main memoir yarn. So either or that you would pick, you would be like good to show off some of the speckles. And I ended up taking this yarn with me to um, my Europe trip. And I wanted something easy, practical, you know, small that I can like take everywhere. And so I ended up taking this. And I figured that even with the accent colors, it was still very small. And what I ended up doing was choosing to do the afterthought heel because I thought that I can just kind of like, you know, knit mindlessly and not even think about anything and just create my tube. And then later on, just kind of add my heel, which is exactly what I did. And so these are all finished because I kind of came back with, you almost finished socks, but not really. I needed to do like a heel and toes on one of them. So I finished them, you know, within a couple of days of coming back. And I love these, you guys. They're so, so beautiful. And I will put pictures and videos and everything for you guys. So you can see like, you know, let me take off this bracelet because I don't want it to get caught in the, um, in the fabric. But I want to show you how gorgeous they are. Look at this speckle yarn, you guys. It is so pretty. And you can see all the little colors. And then I am so proud of like my toes. Look how beautiful they are. And look, this is the cool afterthought heel that always like gets me, you know, creating the heel. And I just love how these feel. This is classic sock DK from Sorella Yarn. And it's really fluffy and and really beautiful. And this is in 100% superwash wool also, by the way. So, and this is, like I said, this is uh, fingering weight and this is her classic sock, which is like in, I believe it's like in 80-20. So 80% superwash and 20% nylon. I could be wrong, it could be 75-25, but I think it's 80-20, I'm pretty sure. And I love making socks. And if you guys haven't tried making socks, you should definitely try it because they're super fun, satisfying, quick knit. And it's so nice to just like, you know, have fun. There's some bugged out colors that you might see that you love, but you don't really want to wear it in a garment. It is perfect for socks. You can have so much fun, wear all the crazy colors, you know, and it makes it super fun to knit you know, socks with all these fun colors. And this is my second finished object. And I am so ready to wear these come fall and winter. I made a size medium, which is what I always make. And I always keep the same measurements for my foot. I wear a size seven. So I always do the same length. And you know, the leg I play with according to what I want, if I want it shorter or longer, but the length of my foot, I got it down to like a science. Like it's so perfect every time. I have all the details on my project page. So, you know, if you're interested, if anybody says I seven and wants to try, you know, what I, you know, the, the length that I do and, and, and all that stuff, you can go ahead and check out my project page and I have all the details on there. But you guys, fantastic. Also, I knit all my socks on circulars, nine inch circulars, and then I switch to DPNs. And, you know, for the smaller uh, spaces, like to do the kitchener stitch or to like when the, the stitches get very tight, I switch out. Usually it's with my heel and my toes. But I find it that's the best kind of knitting for me when it comes to socks. The next finished object is a sewing piece. This is my first like sewn garment. This year I made a goal that I wanted to like 
so something that I can wear. And so I, you know, went to Joann's, bought some cotton that I liked, and I was like, let me try to do something that's simple, but, you know, cute that I can wear. So, and I didn't want to buy any pattern or anything because I wanted to first, you know, test the waters, make sure that, you know, that I can handle it. And then if I see that I'm very comfortable, then I would buy, I have a couple of patterns saved that I really love. And I have some really nice fabric also as well for those patterns, but I'm like, let me just go low key first and then see how that works out. So these are the shorts. I made PJ shorts and this is a free pattern if anybody's interested, and I'll put all the details in the description below. These are uh, PJ Shorts from Rosary Apparel. She has like really nice patterns, very beginner friendly. And so, like I said, this is a cotton yarn that I bought at Joanne's Fabric. And I love it. It's so pretty. And I also bought the elastic at Joanne's. And I can't believe that I made these. I had so much fun making these shorts. And I even, she gives you the option to do pockets or no pockets. I even did pockets, you guys. I am so impressed. I cannot believe it. And I feel that like I did a good job with the, with the waistband as well. It's pretty neat. And all my seams are like really nice and clean. I even put my little label. Look, I order these little labels to sew onto my projects. And I love them. I just like a shop on Etsy, had them made for me, and I love, love, love them. I'm going to start like putting them on my things that I've made. So this is my first time using them, and I sew them on on the machine, and I think they came out so pretty. Also, it helps to tell me which is the front from the back. So now this is a great pattern, and like I said, it's free. You know, you can print it at home and just cut it out and put it together, and the instructions are very easy to follow. And you only need one yard of fabric, which is great. But the only thing, I have some, you know, some things that I want to mention if you were to make these. If I personally were to make these again, I have to do three modifications. One of them I actually did on this pattern, okay, on this pair of PJs. The first one is that they are way too big. So on the, on the link that she puts for the perfect sizing, she gives you the sizes, yes, by waist and hip, perfect but she doesn't give you what the positive ease will be on that size, which is kind of like a necessity when you're creating a garment. So, you know, because with that, you can play on how much do you want, how much ease do you want on your waist, on your hips. So I ended up choosing the size that fit my hips and my waist, and they're huge. I mean, really, really big. The waist actually is perfect. It's the hips that's the problem. And the hips are just like really big. But because they're just short to sleep in and to be in the house, it's fine. But if I were to make it again, I would go down like one or two sizes because it's a lot of fabric. That's, you know, extra fabric. So just keep that in mind. And the other thing was that the, I felt that like you need to raise the inseam on the shorts because the, like the crotch piece, Oh my goodness, it's so far down, like it's too long. And I don't know if it's because I'm very short, like my torso's short, like, you know, so I like, I always have an issue with that. But like, if I were to make this again, I would have to somehow figure out how to raise the inseam, which there's probably tutorials and I can manage. So that's one thing that I would do. I would go down one or two sizes. And the other thing that I would do is I would, which I did in this pattern, I felt when I cut all my fabric that where you put the pockets was too low from the waist. So I actually raised the pockets two inches, um, you know? So I went up two inches and then I, and I sewed them in. And I am so glad that I did that. They are perfect to like the position of my hands. And so those are the three mods that I would do, you know, if I were to make these again. And if you make them, just keep that in mind as well but it's a great free pattern if you've never made something and you want to make something and like i said you know all you need is a yard of fabric you can get you know any nice cotton in joann's they always have sales three dollars a yard and just kind of go for it and see you know how you feel but it's really easy and also she has a tutorial on youtube so you can kind of follow that along as well so i think that's like a great beginner project and i you know, after making this, I got like even more confident and I'm like, I could totally do this. So I am going to go ahead and try to like make another pattern, maybe like some 
flowy pants or something or like a you know a flowy top but definitely this will not be my last garment and i am so like proud of myself for making this and they fit great and i sleep with them and i use them at home and they've been great like i said just a little bit of extra fabric around the hips but the waist is perfect no big deal and uh yeah so that's it for my finished objects and we can move on now to my new cast on so my new cast on is the Cumulus Blouse V-neck by Petite Nay. Guys, I have been dying to cast this on forever and ever. And look how gorgeous my little cast on is. I am loving it. And this is, I am using this fluffy, fluffy, beautiful sage color yarn. This was a gift, a souvenir gift from my husband that he went to Peru for work and he brought back to me this yarn from this really cool shop that he found and it is called Te Tejer is Cool and the yarn name is Lourdes and it's 77% alpaca, 23% silk and it's just really, really beautiful and fluffy and soft and this shop, you guys, is so pretty and they even have like a museum, they give classes, they have like so many yarns I actually think that I, when he went to Peru, that I did a podcast, I actually put a video in there and the yarn, because he brought me some other yarns from there as well, from Peru, not necessarily from the store, but from Peru. And I also share that. I, I, I'll I link it in my description below. So if you guys want to like catch it and see all the, you know, all the cool yarn that he brought me from that trip. But yeah, so I just cast it on the Cumulus blouse and I wanted to make this to have it like now for fall. And so I figured, let me start now so I can have it ready. And it's, you know, I've heard everybody t say that it's a, it's a really quick knit. It's a satisfying knit. And this yarn is working up really beautiful. It's really fluffy and gorgeous. And I think it's going to be like so airy and nice. Oh, look at this color, that sage color. It's really pretty. And I'm really looking forward to having this, you know, this finished object. And I am using, you know, 4.5 millimeter needles, which is what it calls for because I make gauge with this. And just this single yarn because I make gauge with this. This yarn calls for uh, 5 millimeter needles. So I was good to work with the 4.5 millimeter and make gauge for, um, for the blouse. So I was happy to just hold one strand because the other option is holding like two lace weight. So like two mohairs to create like the same gauge. And so I was happy that I made gauge with this and I am like really looking forward to just continue working on this. The only thing that I'm not like a big fan of is doing the raglan increases with this fluffy yarn. So you have to be like kind of careful and make sure that you have good lighting and that you see, you know, where you're putting your needle in because it's like, you know, it's very fluffy and hairy. And so it kind of like disguises and hides the stitch and the where you have to like to do the, you know, to make that one right and one left. But I mean, it's not anything that you can't manage. Um, now that I'm like doing it and understand the yarn, it's the first time I work with the, with the yarn like this. I'm able to like just do it without having to even look. But when I cast it on and I was working with it, I was like, ooh, I have to pay attention. And it, because again, it's a new yarn. I've never worked with a yarn like this. You know, it's very, um, you know, very beautiful and fluffy. And so, you know, at, at least it's not super delicate because the silk core is nice and strong. So that's good. But like I said, I, you know, was very mindful at the beginning. Now I'm good. Like I'm making all my little raglan increases and I'm good. Look how pretty they are. And this is a cast on that I'm like super excited to work on and to have it. And hopefully I can like finish it up and have it. Okay, little update. My phone was overheating and stopped and I had to wait until it cooled off to continue recording. I'm mentioning this in case the lighting is different or the frame is different. So hopefully everything is good now and I can kind of continue sharing. But I just wanted to let you guys know if you see any, you know, lighting difference or like, you know, the frame, the position of the frame is different. So let's get back to where we left off. I was talking to you guys about my Cumulus blouse from Petite Knit. And this is a new cast on. I'm really excited and looking forward to having this done to wear now for the fall and winter. And I'm like loving this nice fuzzy little yarn. And it's the first time I work with a yarn like this. It's so, so beautiful and so good. Look how pretty that is. 
it's like a sage color and it's just really really soft and really airy and really nice and you know doing the raglan increases is a little bit difficult at the beginning because because of the you know because of the the yarn the kind of yarn so you can barely see but then once you have like the raglan line it's easy because you can just kind of follow that and you know you can see it and now i don't have to pay as much attention as i was at the beginning but I am so excited about this cast on and I've seen so many beautiful cumulus blouses. So I have been wanting to make this one and I'm excited. So I'll be working on this cast on and I'll share like updates and stuff always on Instagram. And then obviously when I come back and film, you know, the video for you guys, I can show you an update on where I'm at. But if you always want to like just see what I'm making and, you know, I tend to post more, you know, pictures here and there on Instagram. And that's my new cast on, and I'm very excited about this cast on. It's It, it looks like it's gonna be an easy, quick knit as well. So I'm excited about that, you know? So I'm looking forward to having just like to finish the raglan increases and, and divide for sleeves and just have that, you know, just working in the round. And it's so like mindless and so good. You can just kind of like, you know, do whatever you want and just keep knitting. So it's like easy and practical. And I always love having a project like that. Like having projects that I have to say and follow charts is good. And then having something that's just completely mindless and I don't even have to think about it. I love having that option as well. So... I only have this one new cast on and as you guys know I'm working on my frame sweater so I have those two cast ons that I am like really dedicating time to and I'm also working on you know my other whips that I had from before and so I'm trying to work on those and kind of like you know I want to finish off my traveler shawl um, you know as soon as possible so uh, in the next podcast, I'll bring it out to give you guys an update because I, you know, I put it away for a while and I've been busy with other things. I wanted to finish this off my last summer night and, you know, and then I did the frame cast on. So I have a lot of things going on, but my traveler shawl is like a must finish for full. So out in the next podcast, I'll bring it out and show you guys where I'm at. So let's get into acquisitions. And I am so excited to share this with you guys. So Sorella Yarn, as you know, I love all her colorways. She did a release for the Garden Collection and it was so beautiful, all the colors. I was so like torn. I didn't know what to like, what to pick, but I knew I wanted something. And so, you know me and my socks. So I got this, look at this fun, fun colorway, you guys. I am so, so in love with this. And this is, so the Garden Collection was all themed after like flowers and it was gorgeous. And so this one is called Zinnia. I've never heard of that flower. Z-I-N-N-I-A. This is a sock set. It's classic DK. As you guys know, I love my DK socks. And look at this fun, fun color. Oh my goodness. It's so good. I think that the tiny one, I want to say it's Echinacea. I think. I could be wrong. But I'll put everything in the description below. Because this tiny one doesn't say the color on this, but it's on my receipt. So... I'll definitely, you know, put that down. And like I said, this is classic DK and it's 100 grams in this hank and it is 231 yards and it's super wash merino. And this is also classic DK, the tiny mini. And because she's doing now the minis in classic DK, which is great. She does them in fingering, I think in Stellina and also in, um, in DK. So this is a DK weight. And with this, I am going to make obviously socks because hello, this is gorgeous and this needs to be a pair of socks. And I have to see what, I, I think maybe I just do like plain vanilla socks, I think, with maybe like a little, you know, accent with this, but definitely plain vanilla socks, I think, just to sh really show off all the colors because I just finished the two by two rib with the speckled. So I can do like a vanilla and just really, really show off all these beautiful colors. I love them. So you have pinks in purples, let me see if you could see pink and purples and orange and kind of like a yellow and a green. It is so fun. I love this, love, love, love this. This is gonna create some beautiful socks. Oh, it makes me so happy, this color. The other thing that I got from the garden collection was, this is gorgeous. Look at this red. 
this is such a gorgeous red. This is Classic Decay and this is called Secret Garden. Look at this beautiful red color. Oh my goodness, I love this red color. It's so good. And with this, I am putting together my fall plans. So this is gonna be part of my fall plans. So I'll, in that video, I'll tell you exactly what I'm gonna make with this. So be on the lookout for that video. But I, and I am so excited to work on that because you know, fall, I love fall, I love woolly knits. And so I'm excited to go through all my yarn stash and work through Ravelry, you know, my safe patterns and, and just organize everything that I wanna make. So this is part of it and I bought it with already a pattern in mind so this is i think it's gonna be so beautiful so this is so good and squishy i love her classic decay is really soft and just really really nice and like i said this color the secret garden is such a beautiful red because it's it's like a muted red it's not like loud or neon it's just really gorgeous and oh my goodness i would actually love an entire garment in this color red oh it's so pretty so this is something that I completely obsessed with. And I love red. Red is like, ugh, I love my red lipsticks. I love my nail polish. I just love red. And then the next thing that I got was, look at this gorgeous mohair, you guys. This is just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at this beautiful, I'm gonna stay behind so I can focus on the mohair. <laughs> this is such a beautiful color. And her mohair is so soft and so beautiful. And this is called, let's see, Delphinium. And again, it's inspired by a flower that has these colors. And this is beautiful because it's a like a, a nice uh, blend of like yellows and sky blues and greens. And so it's just really pretty. And I am actually, again, this is part of my fall plans. So I am going to tell you all about that when I'm making with this in those um, you know, during the fall plans, I will tell you on that video, but I am excited to work with this. This is so beautiful. In the pattern that I'm gonna make with this, I've been dying to like make that sweater forever. Well, hint, hint, now you know, it's a sweater. So I cannot wait to work with this as well. It's beautiful. And so this collection, you guys, was just gorgeous. Look at these colors, look at this. I had such a hard time, you know, choosing what I wanted because there were so many beautiful colors. I, oh, what a beautiful collection. She really does like an amazing job with her colorways. I really love the colors that she, you know, puts together. They're beautiful. And even when they're like variegated yarns, they're just gorgeous. And the speckled, forget it. I love the speckles, they're great. Now, the next thing that I got, and this I love, and I had been wanting this bag forever and every time it was like out of stock and so I signed up so it could tell me when it was in stock again and it's from Matter Root you probably know them or maybe not Matter Root they make beautiful bags they're up in Maine these are handmade bags and I wanted to treat myself to like a really nice knitting bag because I really don't have a knitting bag I just have like small little project bags but I wanted like a really nice knitting bag that I can take with me on the go that it's practical and so you know I was like okay I'll invest in something really nice look at this beauty you guys this is just gorgeous and this is all hand painted I love this and so and the material is so pretty too because it's like a gray like a charcoal gray and then the inside is like this beautiful light gray right and then it has like a trimming of black which is gorgeous and then obviously the clips and this is such a nice bag it has let me just show you so it has like one main pocket inside and it's just like a deep you know a deep pocket so when you put all your stuff it will just like it'll sit nicely and then basically you have you can roll this down you can roll this down like this how pretty you can roll this down to you know to access your things and work on your project and then when you're done this is like the coolest thing ever this is the part that I love you just fold it up right to whatever you want so like suppose you have a big sweater you fold it up less and if you have like something smaller you fold it up more you can fold it as much as you want and then you clip it 
am I doing? Hold on. Give me a second there. And then you clip it. And look at this, you guys. How cool is that? Right? And the cool thing about this bag is that you can clip this on your book bag, on your tote bag, whatever you want. And you can always have access to your knitting easily. So this is great for me because I, you know, we travel a lot. And for the plane or the airport, is all, this is so convenient. I always have like a book bag or a tote bag. So I can clip this on and they can hang on the side, but I can still access my things easily to knit. And also on the plane, it's just super convenient and nice. If, you know, if I take the train, you know, upstate or anything, it's just nice to have. It's such a practical, you know, bag. And so I love it. I love all their bags. They do such beautiful work. And there's a small one that I want. So this is the regular size, by the way. They make them in large, regular, and small. And I believe these are called trundle bags. Uh, hopefully I am. Yes, I believe so trundle bags and they have a small one that I want and the small one is perfect because you can hold like either socks or hats you know or gloves something small small scarf and I think that one would be so convenient for me to have because I always like to take those small projects on the go so I heard that they are always at Rhinebeck and so as you know I'm going to Rhinebeck so I will that's something that I'll have on my list for sure to shop for I would like to get a small one and I saw one that I loved and it's like um like this is this is just like I think like uh like a canvas cotton but they have one that has like a waxed uh, like a wax fabric and the colors are gorgeous and so I would love to get one of those and so I have one already in my mind that I want and I hopefully they'll have it there when they go to Rhinebeck you know I can get it and this is such a great bag. I love it, love it, love it. But I love this, this, this flower design is so pretty. And I, you know, it's definitely gonna get a lot of use out of this bag. And like I said, I love this bag. I cannot wait. I just, I just received it. So the shipping was great because you know, I'm, I'm in Jersey. So and they're in Maine. So it was pretty quick and pretty affordable as well, like the shipping. So I'm excited to have this. And this is my, you know, my last acquisition with my secret garden collection, which I am super happy. And I am so excited and looking forward to like fall, fall planning, fall knitting, rhyme back, you know, all those amazing knit alongs that are gonna start happening now for fall. I am all about this and I am here for all of it. And I just love fall and I love winter and I love like woolly knits. So these are fun, you know, to make like our summer little little garments and work with summer yarns. But I don't feel as excited to work with like summer yarns as I feel with like when I when I dive into wool, it's just a whole nother level of like satisfaction for me. And so, you know, I'm really looking forward to the season of knitting. And with that, we come to the end of this podcast. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed my little rambling of all the stuff that I'm making, what I finished, you know, my tips and you get inspired and you cast something on. And also I hope that you guys are so excited for fall and for woolly knits. And I cannot wait to start seeing everybody's, you know, sweaters and hats and scarves and all the patterns and all the colors and all the yarns. I love going on Instagram and just kind of scrolling and seeing all of that and getting so much inspiration. So I, and I love Ravelry for that as well. So I am looking forward to all of it. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here, for watching, for supporting me, for <laughs> listening to me ramble about all my excitement, you know, of all the things that I make. And I hope I inspire you to just kind of like go for it. And, you know, don't be intimidated, just go for it. Who cares if it gets ruined? You just, you know, undo it, do it again and have fun. I hope that you're knitting something that you love and that you're having a great time. Bye guys, happy knitting, happy making.